Hey folks, my name is David Faltzgraf, and I'm the founder and lead sound designer here at sundaysounds.com. We're really excited to be able to provide you with high quality song specific main stage patches for today's most popular modern worship songs. Using our main stage patches, you can nail these songs live, even if you're not using backing tracks and you're the only keyboard player. The great thing about all our main stage patches is that you don't need any expensive third party plugins or software. You just need main stage 3 running on any modern Mac computer, and you can use these patches live. We've designed this patch at the original tempo and in the original key of the song, but there's a video tutorial on the product page that you can check out after you've purchased the patch if you need to do the song in a different key or at a different tempo than the original. To make things even easier for you, we've pre-mapped this patch to our Sunday Keys main stage template. So if you have Sunday Keys, you can just drag and drop this patch right into your concert and it will be pre-mapped to the extra section. There's no setup work or mapping required, just drag it in and you're ready to play. Now I'm going to hand this over to Ryan who's going to walk you through the various sections of the patch to teach you how to use it to nail this song live. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, Ryan here from Sunday Sounds. Now before we actually get started playing this patch, there are just a few things I wanted to note. And the first is that we use the mod wheel in the song to move in and out between different sections. So as we move it up and down, we're fading in and out different sounds. So if you don't have a mod wheel, well that's okay. We've actually got a video tutorial and that's over on our website. It's gonna show you how you can set up a fader or a knob to work in place of the mod wheel so you can still have full functionality of this patch. The next thing is that this patch is designed towards the live version of the song featuring Seth. And so it's a lot more string driven, whereas the um, there's another version that's a little bit slower and it's more of a piano uh, pad and organ type of feel. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the different chords. So this is a four chord song. We've got an E, a B, a G sharp minor, and an F sharp. I wanna show you just where we're gonna play those chords. We're actually not gonna do full chord voicings with the left hand. We're either gonna be uh, playing single notes or octaves. So for our E, we're gonna be playing right here in this range. Our B is gonna be here, G sharp minor, and then our F sharp. I just wanted to point that out so that you're not playing your E down here and the reason that we've got it set up to work in this range is so that if you have a 61 key keyboard and you needed to transpose, well, you're not gonna run out of space in the lower end. So just make a quick mental note of where those four chords are. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the different sections that the mod wheel brings in and out. From zero to 50, we're gonna use that for the slower parts of the song. So our, um, our quieter choruses, our verses, and then from 50 to 100, it's gonna fade in some other sounds like uh, a synth sequence and then a nice violin uh, sequence. And we're gonna use that to bring in just a bigger sound that's gonna work for our bigger choruses and our bridge. So we actually start the song um, with just a pad and we're gonna fluctuate between an E chord and a B chord. So we'll actually start on the B. And there's kind of two different ways to approach this. You can actually change between the B and the E here in the left hand, or you can just hold out the B, that's the root, uh, root chord of the song, and that'll drone, and that will actually work over the different changes. So if you want to make it easier, just hold that B out. Now, as we push into 50, we're actually going to fade in this uh, tremolo string sound and then a pad. And so if you listen to the intro of the song, you'll hear that it starts off with these tremolo strings. So depending on how big you want the song to be, you can uh, start the song with the mod wheel up a bit. And so I'll just give you an idea of how that sounds when the mod wheel starts to push up. So you can hear that pad and, and then those uh, strings start to fade in. So we've actually got the C sharp as well mapped. If you listen to the original recording, they actually layer that C sharp in um, a couple times. And you can choose to do that or not, it's kind of to taste. So our instrumental, like I said, we're just holding that B, optional if you want to change to the E. Our verse is the exact same. We're just gonna play in this range as well. I like to just hold that B. Now, as we move out of the first verse, we go into the second verse. So definitely on the second verse, you're gonna to want to push the mod wheel up to about 50. 
so that we do have a little bit bigger of a sound. It's going to be the same idea though, either just playing and holding that B or alternating between the E and the B. Now from that verse we go into our first chorus. And this chorus is a little bit quieter than our other choruses. And so we're actually going to leave the left end of the octave out for now and just play the roots of the chords here up in the left hand in that higher range. I'll go ahead and just play through that first chorus and then we'll go through and break it down. And that sounds like this. actually end up playing through that chord progression twice. Now if you noticed in the right hand I added in a string sound and so really quick just to note we've got this full right side of the keyboard open for that lead string sound. And so in the right hand it's a pretty simple line and that just goes like this. And so we'll actually repeat that twice when we repeat those chords. Now keep that little line in mind because we're actually going to use that again in our bigger choruses but an octave up. And we'll get to that pretty soon. We move out of that first chorus back into our bridge. Now, or sorry, into our verse, our third verse. Now this third verse is going to be bigger than the first two. And we're actually going to bring in the lower end of the octave in the left hand. And so just to give you an idea of how that sounds, I'm going to go ahead and play through it and we'll go back and break it down. It sounds like this. So the idea is still pretty similar to the first two verses where we're just alternating between the B and the E. Now optional, you can throw in that F sharp minor if that's the way that your band plays it and it's in your chord chart. Whenever we're adding in that lower end to the octave here, we're bringing in that staccato uh, string sound and then a synth bass. Now, as we come out of that uh, third verse, we go into our second chorus. This chorus is going to be bigger, so we're going to actually still leave the mod wheel at 50. We're just going to play octaves, just octaves on the root notes of the chords. And then in the right hand, we'll play that same exact lead that we played the first time. So that'll sound more like this. Just play a little bit of it for you. into our fourth verse. Now this verse actually drops down so in the beginning. So we'll actually just drop out the bottom end of the left hand here and just play kind of our pads. I like to just hold that B. Now whenever we sing then when Jesus, right when you say Jesus, we're going to add that left hand back in to make it big again and we're going to build into our third chorus. Now as we go into our third chorus, at some point, just go ahead and start to push the mod wheel up to a full 100%. I'm just going to kind of go from the end of that fourth verse into the chorus, and then we'll go back and talk about the different sounds that come in and exactly what we're doing. So that sounds like this. repeat that progression twice again so that it's the length of our full chorus. Now if you heard we've actually got when the mod wheel kicks up like I talked about earlier we're building the sound so I'll just go ahead and play that lower range so you can hear the violin pattern that comes in and then that synth pattern. It sounds like this. <laughs> Now, 
That's just so you can hear those two sounds. Of course, when we actually play the chorus, we'll layer that with the top end of the octave. Now in the right hand, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna have that same line that we played over the first choruses, but an octave up. Now from there, we go into our big bridge. And so we're gonna keep everything the same as far as the mod wheel goes, and as far as our approach to playing, full octaves in the left hand, lead with the strings in the right. I'll go ahead and play through that bridge progression real quick, and that sounds like this. Nothing too complicated in the right hand, it's just a simple pattern. I like to play this. And just repeat that. Now from there we're actually just going to finish out the song. The song eventually drops down. So all we have to do is release the high strings in the right hand, release the bottom end of the octave, and we're back to our pad sound. So from a big sound here. And then if you want, while you hold that down, you can actually fade down the mod wheel. It's kind of to taste, and then just let it uh, fade out. The reverb will kind of put a nice tail on it. And so that's just something to kind of bear in mind. Since we're always playing in this range, no matter what, throughout the whole song, if you ever do need to drop down, it's as simple as just going back to these single notes. And then the lower end, we're going to add in that synth bass and those plucked strings. So just building the sound, right hand is free to do leads. So that's sort of the way I approach the song. I try to make it so that it sounds as similar to the record as possible. Of course, you can always simplify this to your needs. So if you maybe didn't want to play the right hand and just wanted to play the octaves, that's totally fine. There's one other part actually that I wanted to go over, and that is in the verses. There's a little bit of string work, and you can kind of hear how that goes on the song, but there is a part that sort of goes like this. And that just happens a few times throughout the song. So it's up to you if you want to add that part in. Other than that, that's really all I've got for you. So I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and that you consider adding this song to your patch library. There are some really awesome string parts and I really love this song. It's going to be a big song, especially around Easter time. So I am Ryan. I hope that you have a great day and we'll see you next time.